You remember Pac-Man, right? Yeah, the little yellow ball who has been the main mascot for Namco, now merged with Bandai for 35 years now? The fellow will always have a very special place in my heart since the days I played Pac-Man World 2 on my GameCube. I don't like the new reboot they gave him, though. Seems a bit too much like a cringy high school student trying way too hard to be cool. But that isn't the point. Before I start, it's obvious that I'm a big Pac-Man fan. I originally played the arcade games on Pac-Man World's 2 arcade bonus area, which allowed you to play all the classic games from the 80s. And one day, I was chatting with my friend on Skype, who, allegedly, told me that he found a supposed version of Pac-Man. A ROM that was found locked away in a safe in the back of an old arcade in some abandoned amusement park, and extracted from a damaged PCB board. Honestly, I didn't believe him. But he gave me a link that I kept noted for a few days since I was busy with school at the time. Eventually, when I got home one late Friday, I hopped on my computer as I was originally going to play some Splatoon or FNAF. However, I was reminded of the link my friend gave me, thanks to the trusty notepad file I saved on my desktop. I opened the link up and was taken to a browser page. The page itself had the story and stated that players who were able to finish this arcade game suffered severe psychological and occasionally physiological trauma, up to and including death. I put my hand over my face and corpsed, thinking this is just going to be another one of those Lavender Town Syndrome hoaxes. But I digress. I clicked the link, leading to where I could play the game on my browser, so I didn't have to risk downloading it and getting any creepy viruses. <laughs> the game loaded with a corrupted ROM startup, accompanied by a loud static, before displaying the words, Insert Coin. I noticed it briefly flashed from coin to soul for about a split second now and then. Nice touch. I hit enter and started the game. <laughs> the familiar maze board that many a gamer remembered displayed along with Pac-Man in the middle where the fruit would usually appear. The little jingle that was stuck in my head as a child played but it sounded really off. It started out normal before slowing down, then speeding up and growing loud towards the end while also going to a lower key. Once the jingle finished, I can move Pac-Man, presented by his iconic pizza shape. One thing I noticed was that I couldn't see any pellets unless Pac-Man came into view in certain channels. I also occasionally saw a blue ghost roaming the maze, he had a sad face in the style of that of a jack-o'-lantern, almost reminding me of something out of Ghost and Coplins, honestly. Munching pack dots played his usual waka-waka sound effect, but it was much deeper than usual. The ghost siren in the background was also slowed down. There were a few power pellets, as any Pac-Man game would have, of course. I ate one and was briefly able to see a full view of the pack dots and the location of the ghosts on the board. This did not allow me to eat them, however, as when I touched the ghost, I simply died. Dying resulted in one of three things. One, the screen would zoom in on where Pac-Man had died and spin around while playing his death sound. Two, the screen would freeze before restarting. Or three, the sprite of the ghost would flash upon the screen along with a loud screech. Needless to say, it pissed me off. I eventually cleared the board and the next level started. This time, there was a red ghost who had a sinister smile. If he saw Pac-Man, he would charge down the channel you were on with an obnoxious buzzing sound. I should also add the fact that the level counter would occasionally flash to names which I presume were the new ghosts that were added each time. The first level was named Blindy, which I can only assume is because he moves around randomly like Clyde. This time, though, it was... Screamy. Judging from his AI's behavior, I think the name was well-fitting. If he got out of his line of sight or while he was charging, that would make things a bit easier. Only last thing to mention is occasionally his sprite flickered between his rather sinister bony grin to the original 8-bit sprite of Blinky. The Red Ghost and Namco's are, if you're American, Midway, original arcade cabinets. The next level introduced a much more sinister ghost, named Slendy. And as his name implies, 
he acted somewhat like Slenderman. He would teleport around the maze at random and even pop up right in front of your face. All music and sound would stop if he was in your view. If you stayed in his line of sight, he would start getting an angry look on his face and then eventually turn yellow. At this point, if he does turn yellow, he will more than likely teleport right on top of you. The next level introduced Old One, who happened to be pink. This was probably the worst of all, as he would follow Pac-Man and phase through the walls of the board. His appearance was probably the most interesting compared to the other ghosts. He had strange tentacles like an octopus or a squid, and he had some strange spot on the top of his head, almost like some sort of gemstone. Also, unlike the other three, he was the only one lacking a mouth completely. The fifth level was when things started getting weirder, though. The walls of the maze started disappearing. No, I'm not even kidding. They were vanishing and I could go through the board freely. It became more annoying this way considering that I couldn't stay straight and the ghost got the advantage. When I got to level 6 though is when things got interesting. Upon entering this level, the walls of the maze were black. I began munching my way along the channels of pack dots, but it was quiet though. The ghost siren wasn't playing in the background. I was rather suspicious and continued onward. There weren't even any ghosts in the little ghost box. After a while, munching a certain amount of dots led to something unexpected. I heard this loud, higher-pitched waka waka. Eating a power pellet, I found out exactly what this thing was. It was another Pac-Man, but it was dark gray. I wasn't exactly freaked out though, until after I ate a certain amount of dots, all the text boxes with score and lives and whatnot changed to run. The dark Pac-Man started moving faster. Eventually it caught up to me, and a screen started glitching, showing several sprites and letters. Pretty much the original level 256 taken to a whole new level of weirdness. After this, the screen cleared, and I was taken to a first-person view. The hell? The graphics were pretty much like Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. Pack dots laid around, and I couldn't tell what exactly was happening. Eventually, I came across Pac-Man. He was a 2D sprite with about four different directions. He seemed to be wandering around the maze. I was confused and pondered to myself a bit, and then it hit me. I was a ghost. I decided my natural instinct was to catch the yellow orb per usual. It seemed he was running away from me, but even if that was the case, it was freaky seeing the damn thing coming towards me with wide open jaws. Even if it's a simple pizza appearance. Upon touching him three times, the game window flashed to black and simply stayed that way. Upon closing, I can't help but wonder, what could this mean? Could this mean the ghosts were past Pac-Mans? Or even worse, past players? You can find a few versions of this game on the internet if you wish to play it. Probably the most popular place resides on Game Jolt. However, I warn you, you may not want to play it. I still love Pac-Man to this day, and the original arcade game especially, but but I never thought there was a darker tale, this old arcade game. <laughs>